we go. I didn't feel the ting, which is good. That ting is like the worst sound in the world. I hate it with a passion. Oh, there it is. What's going on everyone? It's Elias here at the Rangy Forge, back with another video. I got a uh, custom order in the other day. <clears throat> now I was hammering out the details with the client, figuring out what the design's going to look like and everything. I just absolutely fell in love with it, and I'm going to have a lot of fun making this knife, I know. So, I wanted to do a video and take you guys along for the ride. So let's get started. Alright, so here's the drawing that I was sent. And I went ahead and recreated that for myself to scale. So we're going to have a 6 inch blade from our guard with a 3 quarter inch choil. And then the back of the blade here, the spine here, is going to be ground back down into an edge. And that's going to taper down to the tip. This whole thing is going to be made out of W2 since we're going to give it a hormone line and she is going to be absolutely beautiful. So we're going to go with a black walnut for our first chunk of handle here with two uh, either brass or copper spacers, I'm not sure yet. Probably copper I think is going to look the best with the dark uh, walnut. And then I have a chunk of deer antler for the back. And then we're going to be using a stainless steel guard which I'm going to blue using heat. And then I also have a stainless steel uh, pommel piece and the little pommel tip. Those go together like that. And then the tang will actually screw into this little pommel nut. I gotta find my pipe threader. We're gonna thread the tang and screw that nut on and hold everything nice and tight along with some epoxy. And so that uh, that pommel piece here is going to sit on top of the antler. This whole thing is going to be filed down nice and flat. And this is going to sit right on top with a little nut in it. And screw everything nice and tight. So, grab my design, pop right on over to the forge. Alright, so i got a bar of W2 here, nice and hot. First thing we're going to do is forge out that tip. So now that I pretty much have that tip where I want it, just go ahead and start putting that bevel in. Keep drawing that blade out. So I've got her just about to length got to go about another inch or so and you always want to make sure that you make it a little bit longer than your specifications just so when you go to grind um, and you take material off of the knife you don't suddenly go from six inches to five and three quarter and wonder what happened so we always go a little bit larger so that we can always grind material away if needed but we can never add more material so always a little bit longer So right now I'm just kind of taking out all the really deep hammer marks from my big hammer 
smoothing everything out as much as I can. That'll make grinding a lot easier and a lot faster. All right, so now we'll start working on the tang. So first things first, we'll start out by straightening everything out, making it nice and easy to work with. That's straight enough for now. So since I've already got the tang uh, down towards the middle on this side, I'm just going to work this side uh, with the cross on my cross pin hammer. So I got enough of that tang started. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. Some thick stuff. There we go. We'll go ahead and throw that back in the forge. Flatten it out. Now, start tapering, tapering it out as far as I can. I'm just going to focus just on the tip. Just really get that tapered down. And we want to get all the way through the tang to the palm also. I'm just stretching this as much as I possibly can. And it's just a very repetitive process. Just hammer out flatten and turn and flatten and turn and flatten until you've drawn that tang out as far as you want. All right, so I have the tang fully forged out and now I just gotta bend it so we match our deer antler here. So I want that nice curved shape. I'm just going to kind of approximate what I think it's going to be and then we'll match it up and see where we're at. So I should probably do it the other way, how it's actually going to go. Also almost dropped my deer antler. Alright, let's match that up. So it needs to be a little bit less curved right at the end. We'll heat that back up. Straighten that out a little bit. Let's see how that lines up. A little bit less. Give that a try. That's just about what I'm looking for. Take a tiny bit more out of the tip here. And 
and that's going to be perfect. So now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make sure everything is nice and flat and flush with the knife. Then we're going to stick it back in the forge, bring that up to temperature, turn the forge off and let it cool for a couple hours, and that'll soften the blade down and make grinding a lot easier. So here's our knife, and I've got it kind of laid out on uh, my design here, and we're pretty stinking close to where I want to be. Go ahead and throw a tape on here. We've got six and a half inches, perfect, so that gives me plenty of room to grind away. So I want my shelf uh, for the guard to be right about here. And we're going to take out you know, all this material here, make a really nice clean flush shelf for the uh, guard. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the grinder and we're going to make this nice and flat and flush. And then get that profile, that nice kind of clip point, drop point profile there. And a little bit of a swoop here. Just get that general shape nice and ground in. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go over to my angle grinder and cut some material off for this choil. And then I'm going to go over to um, my bench grinder and then grind a nice curved choil. So there's that choil ground in, and uh, now I'm just going to go over to my rotary tool and clean that up a little bit, and then we're going to be grinding on our initial bevel.
first bevel on there. Everything nice and flat. So now, I want to go ahead and grind the back of the spine there. So we're going to grind that. We're going to grind that right there. So the next step I got to do with this knife is uh, grind my shelf down to size so my guard will slide on there. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to hold the guard up, figure out how I want it to lie, and then I'm just going to mark it on the inside. I'm going to mark it on the inside so I know where my guard's going to be. And then I'm just going to grind grind that shelf down to the right thickness, or the right width. Oh, 
sits up there nice. On there pretty nice. Now I'm just going to take uh, take this to a 60 grit, my green belt, and then uh, I'll check everything out. But I think she's going to be ready for uh, a mold line. All right. So I know I had said uh, we're probably ready for uh, furnace cement for Hamon, but. I've actually decided I want to fully flesh this handle out before I go ahead and do that. So if I have to make any adjustments to the knife, I can. So I've got the guard, slides on there pretty nice. And the next thing we have is a chunk of black walnut. That's going to go on there. And then there's actually going to be two, uh, I'm going to go with copper, two copper spacers in between on both sides of the walnut. And then our chunk of antler, which I trimmed down, it's going to go on the back here. So there's a couple things that I have to do to get this knife put together. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut our piece of walnut in half, scribe a line down the center for our um, tang, and then go over to my mill press right there and mill out some material so we can glue this back together and that'll slide on and off the tang nice and easy. Then we're going to get two pieces of copper. I've got hopefully enough of this, a little bit thicker copper. And that's going to have a hole milled through it for the tang as well. And then that's going to slide on and be glued onto the wood. So there's a copper on both sides and it'll look nice and pretty when she's done. So there's my two halves of that. We'll glue them together, clamp that up, let that sit. So next up on the list of things to do is I have to drill out the antler for the tang to go through. And while we have a curved antler for the end of this knife, and we have our nice curved tang, which should fit in there beautifully, but our drill bits are straight. So how the hell are we going to do a nice curved hole through the antler? Well, we can't. Long, long story short, we, we, we can't. So what we end up doing is we do exactly what pipe makers do when they're making a pipe. So I'm going to rough, uh, actually do it with marker here, rough sketch out our uh, antler here. Figured I'd freehand it, but why when I have the antler right here to kind of trace? And we actually can show exactly what we got going on here. So here is our antler. And how exactly are we going to get that curve with the straight drill bit? Because we want our tang to come out here, but it's coming in here over here. So, the way that we do that is we drill all the way about to the middle with this drill bit. So we'll have our nice straight hole right here. And then we're going to turn the whole antler and drill nice and straight through the back. And then that'll meet at the middle. And as long as our drill bit is good and thick and we have a good big hole, that tang will slide right through it. Now, luckily this one isn't as curved as other antler might be, which gives us a little bit of a hand up in this whole scenario. But same process, even if you had more of a curve, if you had something like this, same process, drill straight, drill straight, and then have the two meet at the middle, and then just have a big enough hole that that tang 
can slide right through the two and go kind of straight across. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got my depth set for my drill bit to go about halfway through. And I also am starting a little bit closer to the top of the antler. Just double check and make sure everything's good. There's my first hole. Now we'll flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. Now I want this one to be a little bit more centered. And I actually want this to come back a bit. I'm probably going to set it like that. Then I'll have to be careful on my depth on this one so I don't blow through. But that should be about where I want it. Lift this up a little bit more. Right there. Yeah, you really got to just take your time, line everything up, measure twice, drill once. That should be about halfway through. Now I don't think I have connected the two holes yet. Yeah, I do not see light through there. So now we'll just go through and keep going a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Sorry about that. Keep going, go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper until they meet in the center. And then take out as much material in there as I can and make as much room as I can until the tang slides in there really nice. So we've got the antler starting to slide on there nice. I've got it about where I want it, up on the tang. Might go a little bit closer, uh, but I think I'm actually gonna use brass for my spacers. It's a little bit thicker. I get a little bit more of a stretch with these, and uh, brass was what the uh, client had initially said um, that they wanted on there. So I think we are gonna go with brass, which means I gotta wait for more brass to come because this is all I got of this thickness. But it should be here in a day or two. We'll get that good. So yeah, as I said, uh, antler will probably slide forward a little bit more. Um, I might actually add some more antler back to this uh, to slide that antler up a little bit. And we'll just put some sort of a spacer between the two chunks, but just same process, mill this out. And uh, let that slide up, go a little bit further on the knife. But for now, I am actually happy with this and the tang, so I'm going to go ahead and coat it in some satinite or satinite for the hormone line. So I have my satinite or satinite, whatever you want to call it, furnace cement, and we're going to apply that to the spine of the knife and put a nice little pattern in there for the hormone line. Now, if you want to hear more about hormone lines, please go ahead and watch my last video on hormone lines. Uh, but I'm just going to do everything kind of down and dirty, nice and quick here. Do a good job, obviously, but I'm not going to go super in depth with what I'm doing. Like I said, you can watch my other video if you want a little bit more of an in depth video on how I do a hormone line. So we're just going to apply pretty good amount of furnace cement on the spine here. And 
then I'm just going to take the point of my little uh, shovel here and just get some nice little mountains going. Some pretty little mountains, happy little mountains. If Bob Ross made knives. There we go. And then we'll flip it over. And you want to match that same design on the other side. Both so it is aesthetically pleasing. And also so it has that really nice thick layer of the furnace cement on both sides in the same spot which gives us a better luck at creating a Hamon line because the Hamon line is created from your steel hardening at different rates now everywhere where the furnace cement is the steel will stay cooler and it won't harden as much which adds extra durability to the spine of your knife so you can really beat on it and not worry about your knife chipping or breaking. And then it also leaves that beautiful clad line as well. So there's that. There's a bit of movement. I'll add a few more small little details on here just to keep things interesting. there. So now we're going to leave that to sit overnight and dry and I will be back with you and we'll heat treat this knife first thing tomorrow morning. So here's our knife covered in the furnace cement. Let's get rocking. split water salt somewhere in there. Very, very, very salty water. And here we go. I didn't feel the ting, which is good. That ting is like the worst sound in the world. I hate it with a passion. Oh, there it is. I heard it. I heard the ting. Let's see what happened. I can't tell. It might have just been the furnace cement. I think it might have just been the furnace cement. Oh, no, there it is. There's the crack. Damn it. Fuck. Alright, well, guess we got to forge a new one. Well, unfortunately, our knife did crack. Got a nice big crack right there, which is no bueno. Can't use this knife. So, unfortunately, I'll have to forge a new one. But I wanted to leave this in the video as a lesson for both myself, obviously, and for you. When you quench in water, you have to be very careful about the temperature of your steel. Even if it's a good steel that can go for a brine quench, you have to be very careful with that temperature. I think I was just a little bit too hot, and it's so hard to tell when it's nice and sunny out because you don't have the same color, you can't see the same color, so it's very hard to tell uh, how hot the steel is. So I think I was just a little bit too hot. That initial quench was perfect. Started jiggling it around and it must have found a spot right in there and it just freaking cracked it. So unfortunately we'll have to forge out a new one real quick. Uh, luckily that shouldn't take me too long and I should still have this done, knife done by Friday. End of the day Friday. Which so basically three day process. In any case wanted to leave that in there. Show you what had happened. I'm going to go forge a new one and I'll be right back with you. We forged out a new knife. And if you'll look at the other one, 
<clears throat> that cracked. I modified the shape a little bit, made that a little bit more of a clip point, less of a drop point, uh, more like the original drawing. And I also got this grind right here really nice and beveled back a little bit more. Uh, again, a little bit more like the drawing. So the next step is to dunk the knife in ferric chloride. So what ferric chloride does is it's an acid and it eats away at the steel. And because we put the uh, furnace cement on there for the hormone line, the spine and where the furnace cement was are all going to be softer than the blade. So the acid's going to eat at the two at different rates, and that's what leaves behind our hormone line. So we're going to dunk it in here for 10 seconds. And pull it out. And let's see if we can see that hormone line at all. Oh yeah, I can see it. Starting to come out. You get most of this off of here so I don't leave acid all over my workbench. There you go. You can just barely see that hormone line starting. Right on the bottom. So, I'm going to go wash this knife off and I will be right back. So there's that hormone line, just started there on the bottom. You can just start to see it there. So the next step is we take our good old heavy duty rubbing compound and apply a little bit of that to an abrasive cloth. And we're just gonna wash those oxides off the knife. There's no reason to be too, too particular about it. You just kind of rub it down, clean it off. We're going to end up doing this process three times in total. So you don't have to be super, super meticulous about it. All right, now we go over to the buffing wheel and clean the rest of that off. And we'll be able to see that hormone line on there. go. You can see that hormone line starting to pop right down here on the edge. It's going to look pretty sweet. Alright, so there's the final hormone line on there. Sorry about the light reflecting off the blade. I don't really have a good place to show off the hormone without that happening. It sucks that it's as low as it is. I wish it was up higher so you could see it a little bit better, but, you know, W2 steel sometimes can be weird. Um, I put the furnace cement all the way up here, and the hormone line's all the way down here, so sometimes it just happens. Luckily, you can see it enough, and it looks absolutely killer, and I'm just going to try my hardest to not lose any of that when I put the final edge on there. But, so, next thing the handle. Alright, so I have all the pieces for the handle. And we're going to go ahead and slide this on. I've got my little walnut chunk here with an arrow showing me exactly which direction it goes. Just turn this and monkey it on there. Get 
that lined up nice. And of course, I actually went with the bigger piece of antler, just to give me a little bit more room on the knife. I wanted the handle to stick out a little bit further than the smaller one did. So uh, actually I can show you the smaller one, if I could find it, there it is. I can actually show you with the small one. Um, if we went with that, that's how big the handle would be. And that actually doesn't look too bad, you can hold on to it nice there and put your finger here in the choil and that actually works pretty well. Um, but I've decided we're gonna make it a little bit longer, give you a little bit more grip on there. Just an extra you know, inch or so of grip on the end. You can still use that choil nice. And I've got the tang all lined up perfect for uh, my pommel guard and the little nut. So the next thing that we're gonna do for this knife is I'm gonna take the guard, the pommel, and the little pommel cap, and we're going to turn them blue. Now the way that you turn steel blue is you can either use cold blue if it's carbon steel, or you can use heat. And since we're working with a stainless steel guard and pommel, we're gonna use heat. So I've got my little uh, ring pliers and I'm using those so that I can hold the guard on the inside and heat the entire outside without worrying about having a little plier mark on the corner from grabbing it where it didn't heat the same. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my torch. this guard and we're just going to very slowly start heating it up. Now the whole time I'm doing this I'm paying attention to the color. So we're going to start, it's going to start with a very faint yellow and that's going to turn to a nice straw yellow and then it's going to go to blue. We want to keep it at blue. So I'm just going to kind of nicely evenly heat up the guard until we get to that straw yellow. And if this takes too long, I did also consider putting it in my uh, tempering oven as high as it will go just to get that initial temperature into the piece because the torch might take quite a while to heat up. I figure we might be at that yellow by now, but we're still, we're still nice and shiny chrome. So it's very important when you do this, if you want to get the best results, is you want to make sure that your piece is nice and polished. Now we're starting to get to that dull yellow. I don't know how well you can see on the camera the color starting to change here. But we're getting to that straw yellow now. that heat going. And we're starting to get some blue. So now I just want to go nice and slow and you almost uh, paint the piece with the flame. And now know that when you take the piece off of your fire or away from your fire it will continue to heat, so you actually want to keep it in the flame just before the color that you're looking for, so that when you pull it and it continues to change, it doesn't overchange. So in this case, we're going for a dark blue and not a black. So I'm just going to heat until I get just before dark blue and then pull it off and let it come the rest of the way.
Alright, so I got the uh, guard and the pommel as blued as I can. There's actually quite a bit of blue in there. I've got that nice cobalt blue going on. Just took a lot of time. Definitely important. Everything is as mere polish as you can before you start applying heat to it. That gives you the best results. So to glue everything together, I'm going to use a uh, two-part JB Weld and instead of my two-part epoxy. And the reason for that is I have a lot of metal on metal connections. And when you have metal on metal connections, the uh, epoxy does okay, but it doesn't do nearly as good as the good old JB Weld. So this takes a little bit longer to dry than the epoxy, but always, always gives you a better bond. It also helps me fill up space more, so anywhere in uh, this little piece or in the antler where there is extra space around the tang, the JB Weld does a really good job of filling in that space, grabbing the sides of everything and just locking everything nice and tight. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up, one to one ratio, and glue everything together. Alright, I have the knife all glued up. I'm going to go ahead and just let this sit overnight and fully solidify. I'm going to do a little bit more work on the handle. I want to grind out where this bumps up right here. I want to grind that out. And then uh, also, like I said, I've got a uh, dark wood polish that I'm going to throw on the walnut. Just get that a little bit darker, really make it pop, polish everything up nice. And then, of course, we'll put the final edge on there. I'll make up a sheath for it. And I'll show her to you when she's finished. Thanks for watching till the end. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And if for some stupid reason you're not subscribed already, well, why don't you hit that subscribe button as well? In the description, links to my Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, and website. I do all my sales over on Etsy or on my website, www.therainyforgeblacksmithy.com. And if you'd like to order something custom, like the badass knife you just saw me make, well, reach out to me directly over on my Etsy or through Facebook Messenger. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay sharp.